For all their problems, wars, conquests, malice and pain, they brought the galaxy. They also brought beauty beyond anything ever since. Humanity often had a way with words. They were quickly the most versatile species in the galaxy regarding the craft of speech. They were, with practice, able to absorb and imitate most of the different languages and speech patterns of the other races of the galaxy. In their early years, they were a hateful and fearful society. They had not expected the universe to be as densely populated as it was, and it didn't take many bad encounters for them to reveal their proficiency at war. Within the first three centuries of the birth of their interstellar lives, they had been conquered twice over by rivaling empires where their solar system had been nothing but a part of the other's proclaimed domain. It surprised much of the galactic scene when, at the end of their third century, they had not only adapted the technologies of both societies, but managed to improve upon them in rapid succession. In their 4th and 5th century, they beat back the Rakari Empire, causing mass genocide as they waded through the worlds of their old occupiers. The horrors unleashed left a scurrying mark on humanity for decades, turning the tide of their galactic evolution. From their acts of war, which some still argue were within their galactic rights, humanity did not so easily forgive themselves or their predecessors. They had eliminated some of the Rakari's cultural sites and destroyed some of their oldest art archives, something they often compared to an event in their mythic past, something which they often use as no omen as to humanity's direction. In their 6th and 7th century, we saw humanity form a coalition between the Rakari and their rivals, the Ixal. This was something no one could have ever expected. They had been bitter rivals and fought wars for nearly two millennia over systems of rare resources or just petty grievances. Humanity had, in two centuries, not only ended the war but created a blossoming alliance with them, securing their place as head of the Federation. In their effort to rebuild the planets and systems they had taken for the Rakari and Ixal, they found numerous artifacts and cultural texts that genuinely showed the likeness of the two empires. The imagery they portrayed themselves and used to define their feelings, laws and view of the universe was closely related to their constant interaction for so long. Humanity saw a golden opportunity to end a hostility that had caused them great harm and millions of their neighbours' lives. I remember seeing the videos broadcasted for all to view, how humanity used their words to show them that they were not that different, that they, despite past horrors, could indeed coexist. After the birth of the Hathari Federation, a name that took the shape of the free empires from which it spawned, the humans, the Ithal and Rakari, they truly blossomed into their galactic life. Humans were revered when dealing with tensions between opposing parties. Humanity was often used as ambassadors in times of dispute, in talks of conceits, war or uprising. Whenever you saw tension rise for one reason or another, if you wanted to avoid war, death or loss of trade, humanity was there to influence negotiations. Humanity indeed grew in its roles as ambassadors and trade negotiators, but it wasn't until much later that the galaxy indeed grew from the prosperity of humanity, for there was an alternate outcome from their exposure to so many species and settings that we could never have anticipated. In their 8th to 10th century we saw massive works of art being flooded from the small parts of humanity that had lived in other worlds as minorities. They had a way of encaptivating the local arts and bringing their takes on it, and they were beloved for how well they could assimilate into other cultures and help them grow. We saw the inspired works that depicted the work of drones' lives in the asteroid belts of the Duo Consciousness, what the rebirth of a Za'alu was supposed to feel like through neural links that conveyed it to visible colours unique to each species, and how the Kromba toiled in their pre-cocoon life as a serenade in their language which inspired the young of the Warrior Empire to pursue arts. Humanity set about their most extraordinary project ever, the creation of the heart. It was to be a mega art installation that was around an unused red dwarf and lived directly off its energy, with capacity to grow on its own, housed by their most highly developed AI to collect works of art from every corner of our galaxy, to regularly create exhibitions that follow the artistic trends of worlds, civilizations and races, while portraying the evolution of their style and show how their intricate messaging correlates to others. It wasn't until the 15th century that we started to see the diminishing of humanity. For 500 years, humanity had inspired us to become more than we were. We had transformed plants, atmospheres and planets for art and beauty. Humanity had opened a box which never truly closed again. Humanity had brought with their quick rise on the galactic scene beauty and recognition between the races of the galaxy that had never existed before. The device invented by their most renowned artist, Halom Gore, that allowed the species of the galaxy to see art through the eyes of other races indeed was a revolution that changed us to our cause.
but as humans often depict it in their works of art, a good deed never goes unpunished. As humanity spread outwards and away from the galactic center, a plague ravaged through them in the billions. It is still unknown how a plague could have moved so quickly as it did to humanity. Some prescribe it to be a cause of the interrelations of humanity with some of the other races of the galactic scene, but nothing was ever confirmed. Humanity struggled long to cope with the losses of their fellow humans. Their art quickly turned from something of beauty to something of terrible darkness and sorrow. The pain that was felt both for humans and by humanity let itself be felt in the worst way possible. Pogroms started across the many worlds which had dense human populations still left. In fear of a repeated incident, humanity contracted into itself. An incoherent war started between humanity and their once fellow galactic citizens. In the following four centuries, humanity was swept back and forth between wars, famine and isolation. It wasn't until their 20th century that humanity had been reduced to a single world, located not far from the planet of origin. And their pain and that of every other society that had seen the rise and fall of humanity was broadly expressed and immortalised in their arts. In their confinement, humanity vowed never to regress as they once had, that they would transcend fear and once again be who they were meant to be, an agent of the good and righteous of the galaxy. And so they tinkered away. They sought to perfect their arts, and studied the histories and expressions that the many races that had evolved and created as the aftermath of humanity's expression had transformed them, how races would learn to speak the languages of other races if physically possible, rather than using their translators as a sign of courtesy and respect. And as humanity embarked on what they called a journey into their hearts, we watched and wept as humanity, one by one, left their physical form, became one with their heart, and uploaded their individuality, their consciousness, their self into the massive data banks that were the art installation. And we wept as the last human died, as they left our physical plane to live among the enormous amounts of history and data that the ever-expanding heart was collecting, reminding us that humanity was never gone, but immortalized in their quest for beauty and peace. Whenever disputes were held, the heart is where we turned to. Whenever wars were on the verge of happening, the heart is where we solved our matters. Whenever we as individuals lost our meaning, the heart is where we found ourselves. Thus began humanity's true legacy, and the words of wisdom that might never die. When in doubt, look into your heart.